So last week, there was another paper which I found quite interesting, so I thought I'd tell you about it. The title of the paper is A Planar Rhombic Charge Separated Tetracyla Cyclobutadiene. So what does that mean? Well, let's begin with benzene. Many of you, I hope, know that benzene is a flat molecule which has six carbons, and each carbon has a hydrogen attached to it, C6H6. And for a long time, chemists have wondered about the molecule C4H4, where you've got four carbons and four hydrogens, rather than the six carbons and hydrogens in benzene. So you might think that C4H4 might be a square. C4H4 turns out to be very reactive, and it took chemists ages and ages to make it. But when they did make it at very low temperature, they discovered it wasn't a square, but it was a rectangle. So it was pulled out in this direction with one side much longer than the other. Because chemists really like the periodic table, once they've done something with carbon, they ask what would happen with the same silicon compound. Now, you can't make SI4H4 because it's far too reactive, but you can make a so-called analog where the hydrogen has been replaced by a really complicated large group. When you have large groups, it surrounds the reactive part and stops it reacting, at least slows down its reaction so you can see it. So in this case, they use this group here, which is called E-MIND, where the E stands for ethyl groups, and the M stands for methyl groups, and the IND, I'm not sure what for. So you have this big lump in which the silicon can join on to this bond here. So they made the compound. So the question is, would it also be a rectangle? And much to everybody's surprise, it turned out to be a rhombus. Rhombus is a diamond to you and me. You have four silicon atoms, which are all the same. They're all bonded to the same groups. But two of them have a big angle, and two of them have a small angle. And this is really quite unusual. Now, it turns out it's not completely unexpected, because when people made C4H4, they realized from theoretical calculations it could be a rectangle, or it could be a diamond. So they'd done calculations that said this could occur, but now with a silicon compound, it's the first time it's been discovered, observed in nature. So now the big question is if you make the carbon or germanium analogues of the same compound, that's four carbons or four germaniums, each with this big group E-mind attached to it, what would happen then? Could you make diamond-shaped carbon compound? And it's things like this that make chemists really think about their theories and their understanding of how compounds form particular shapes. So yet again, we have an interesting idea that makes chemists think differently.